everyone we are back and we are going to go now and talk about crystallographic planes so previously when we went through how we're going to describe directions and families of crystallographically equivalent directions so now we're going to do the exact same thing with planes a little bit different notation you know directions were mostly just vectors effectively uh, and we would basically you know write our negative notation use our Miller indice notation um, and then make sure that we're using integer values when we describe uh, essentially directions. But now we're going to use parentheses for planes and then for family of planes, we're going to use squiggly brackets. Uh, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So how are we going to draw planes? So if we're given a plane, so let's look at the 111 plane. So these are my Miller indices HKL. But in each of these, if I want to find my intercepts, I'm going to take the reciprocal. So my x-intercept is going to be 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1, etc., etc., etc. So those would be essentially my Miller indices, my basically by my intercepts. So x, y, and z intercepts. So if I draw the 1, 1, 1 plane, it should look like this. 1, 1, 1, here, here, and there we go. So we could start to actually think about what would some other planes look like. So let's draw our cube. Let's draw three cubes. Let's draw the cube over here. So we did one, one, one. How about one, zero, zero? Well, what's my intercepts? X intercept is one. What's 1 divided by 0? Infinite. So why my y-intercept is infinity, and my z-intercept is infinity. So basically, I'm never going to intercept this axis, I'm never going to intercept this axis, and I'm only going to intercept my axis right here. So my 1, 0, 0 plane, and you could, you could change your origin as well. So for example, if I choose my original origin here, it's like this. If I choose my origin right here, it's this. So I'd have a point right here. I could choose another origin, like this here. I could just I could choose an origin right here. Again, it comes out of the board, so intercept here. I could choose an, or choose an origin here. Origins are arbitrary, but you could see here that that front face that would be my one zero zero plane. What about one one zero? Well, here again, intercepts one one never intercepts my z axis. So here here again, I could change my origin to be here. And I'd see interception here, interception on my y here, and then I would go across. So remember, look at if I choose my origin here, intercept on the x right here, intercept on the x or on the y here, never touching the z. If I choose my origin here, intercept the x here, intercept my y here, I'm good to go. So that's effectively how we would draw that. What about 101? Or actually, let's do 10. Oh, how about this? 102. Oh, so again, what's my x intercept? 1. What's my y intercept? Nothing. What's my z intercept? It's not 2, because remember, reciprocal, it's a half. So I could do like this. If I choose move my origin from here to here, same thing. 1, half, connect, and there we go. We've got it. It'll never intercept the, the y-axis, and we're good to go. So that's effectively how you would do planes. Now, let's say, for example, I want you to draw the um, 0, minus 1, 0 plane. Let's do it over here. So let's go ahead and do this. So I can't, if I want to go basically back, or actually, um, <laughs> actually to the other direction, I could start my origin out right here. So this is my new origin. Let me change it my color. So if I want to draw, for example, 0, 1 hat, 0. So I could choose my new origin here. So this is my x, this is my positive y, this is my positive z. So never going to intercept here, never going to intercept here, but I will intercept over here. And I could do the same thing here. So this would be basically my plane. So that would be my zero minus one zero and you'll notice that in this crystal structure in a cubic structure these would be crystallographically equivalent so these would also be crystallographically equivalent right here so what is this plane 
we'll actually leave that. So if I want to draw or actually write out again, crystallographically equivalent planes, one zero zero squiggly. So those are crystallographically equivalent. Again, they're passing the same number of atoms. They look exactly the same if I were to rotate this cube. We're going to do this a little bit more in depth once we actually look at simple cubic BCC and FCC as well. But what about this plane right here? So again, if I try to look at the intercepts now, if I kind of work backwards, if I just draw a plane, what are my intercepts? Well, if I choose my original origin as my origin, basically everything is intercepting through zero. And if I try to flip an intercept one over zero, again, to get back, because for intercepts, to get to my HKL, I have to take the inverse. One over infinity, that's not going to work. So I need to redefine my origin. So where am I being, where am I intersecting? I'm intercepting my intercepts, x is 1, y is minus 1, so 1 minus 1, and I'm never touching my z-axis here. So again, these would be families. They look exactly the same. They have the same area as well. That's always another key distinction. And I've got it. So that's it. So you can look at some examples. So again, intercepts, planes, um, 1, 1, 1. What would, you know, again, let's hide this. So again, my origin is like here. What's my intercept one here? What's my intercept here? So one, one, zero plane. Again, if I want to do the inverse. So remember, got to make sure that that's the case. Here, again, I'm at the origin. So, so I need to redefine my origin. If I choose my origin here, where's my intercepts? So I'm going to go Nothing here, so I don't intercept x. What about my y? Yes, indeed. Oh, shoot, I think there's a... Hopefully I didn't make a mistake on one of those planes. Nope, I think I did. <laughs> I got myself, I got myself double thinking, right, or thinking a little bit too hard right now. All right, so where am I intersecting? My y-intercept is equal to minus one, and my z-intercept here is gonna be a half. So I'm going to flip that. So again, 0, 1 hat, 2. So that would be my plane here. Excellent. So again, we'll have those crystallographic equivalent planes. And remember, this is really critically important. And again, we, we touched upon this previously. Cubic materials will typically behave isotropically. They're going to have essentially the same properties, though they, they, whether that be diffusive properties, mechanical properties, electrical properties, they'll be the same in all these different directions. But there are a lot of materials that are anisotropic, um, so they have different properties depending on the direction when you look at them. This is going to be very important. It's going to make our lives very annoying, um, and it's going to increase our math <laughs> quite a bit when we look at mechanical properties of anisotropic materials. So that's it for this uh, lecture. So next time we are going to delve into simple cubic BCC and FCC and how do we describe those uh, systems. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.